Hello everyone, it's Lix, and today I have a speed paint for you guys where I show you my process from beginning to end in creating an anime style illustration. If you would like to see how I went from this to this and learn a few tips along the way, then continue watching. So whenever I draw a somewhat large scale illustration, aka anything with a background, I always sketch out everything beforehand. I prefer doing this over drawing the character first because it makes it much easier to work on the overall composition and lighting slash tone. So here, I'm just using a brush tool at around 75% opacity to map out the drawing. I should also add that having a reference is incredibly helpful, not just for the pose itself, but also for the lighting, shading, and overall cohesiveness of the drawing. So something that can also be helpful is actually to start blocking in the tones and values of the illustration to show what it will look like when it's all completed. Since light and shadows play such an important role in making a scene look believable, having contrast in different values is essential. In my earlier attempts at drawing backgrounds, I couldn't figure out why they would always look so flat and washed out. But later, I realized that it was because of my tendency to gravitate towards lighter and more pastel colors, and since then, I've really tried to be more attentive of my values. But yeah, contrast and value variety is really important when you want to make a scene look natural and believable. So next comes the longest, most tedious, and least enjoyable part of the entire process, at least for me, which is line arting. Um, for this drawing in particular, I had a very rough sketch of the girl to work with, which means I had to draw the majority of my lines from imagination, but also with the help of references. I know I've preached on and on about how helpful references can be, but I'm gonna say it again. If you don't know how to draw something, continuously practicing drawing that one thing from imagination alone isn't going to help as much as studying a real life example. Now I do realize that there are things which look better stylized than what it looks like in reality. But without having the foundation of knowing how it works, you're basically bending the rules without ever getting to learn them. That's why I urge you guys to practice hard, but also smart and efficiently, and of course use some references along the way. Okay, but back to the process. I'm basically just lining the sketch, but also paying attention to every line that I put down. Sometimes, it's not really how many lines or details you put in, but rather the flow and expression of each line. In my opinion, it's much better to take your time and create quality lines because it is the foundation of your drawing after all. For example, I'm working on the skirt right now, and each line that I draw can really affect how three-dimensional the skirt looks as a whole, so I'm trying to not put too many lines to overwhelm the eye, but just enough to show the illusion of form. But overall, line arting is a very long process, and I have way too much footage of it. So for time's sake, we shall fast forward through the rest of the lining process and go on to the next step. So to start the coloring process, I'm first creating multiple layers for each part of the drawing, such as the skin, hair, clothing, and eyes. And the way I'm doing this is by using a mixture of the selection tool and also manually filling in where the colors should be. The color that I'm using is going to act as the base for the shading. And because I'm used to shading from light to dark, the base color will usually be the lightest out of all the colors, with exception for the highlights. I've actually seen some tutorials and videos on YouTube that suggest to use a mid-tone instead of a base color, but I'm still stuck in my ways that I haven't tried it out yet. But anyways, when I'm starting to shade each part of the drawing, I try to use colors that are of course darker, but also more saturated. This prevents your colors from looking too muddy or gray, and I also vary the hue a little bit to make the shading look more interesting. So here is a visual representation of what I mean on the color wheel in Psy. To get a darker and more saturated color, I drag the color picker diagonally into the lower right corner. And for the hue, I shift it either left or right depending on the situation. Another general tip for shading slash coloring is to have both soft and hard edges. Things such as blush or shading on the side of the legs should have soft edges to indicate the roundness of the form, while shadows from clothing can have harsher edges for contrast. 
But since this isn't really a tutorial, and I'm starting to run low on commentary, please enjoy the rest of the coloring process and I'll meet you back when we get to lighting. In my opinion, lighting and shadows is really what makes a drawing of a character in an environment look real, as if they actually belong there. How I achieve this is by using a layer mode named Multiply. Any color you use under this layer mode will cast a sort of shadow onto the layers beneath, and make the subject darker without losing the shading already done in the coloring stage. And here, you can see how much of a difference shadows can make on the girl through just one layer of strategically placed colors on the multiply layer mode. Also, you can always erase the shadows on the multiply layer which shows the original colors and can act as light. Now, we are entering the final step of this process which is creating a background. I've also switched over to a different drawing program called Clip Studio Paint because of the amount of resources and custom brushes it has. Like here, I'm creating a tree for the background using Clip Studio's default foliage brush which is super handy. I'm also following a tree tutorial which I'll link in the description, but basically I'm just using different colors in different sections of the tree to look more dimensional. And other than the tree, I'm moving things around and adding different elements to the foreground and background to see what works and what doesn't. I'm also constantly playing with the tonal adjustment features in the program such as brightness, contrast, and level correction to change it to what I see fit. Sometimes, you really need to take the time and experiment to achieve the look that you want. One last feature I really like to use is blur. By applying blur to the background trees and the foreground branches, it gives a sense of depth and focuses on the girl. And that's about it! But please stick around for an important announcement as well as the finished illustration. So here is the final product. I'm quite happy with how it turned out and I hope that this video gave a little more insight about how these drawings are created. And as for the announcement, I first want to say thank you guys so much for helping me achieve yet another milestone, which is 5,000 subscribers. And as promised, I will be doing a face reveal as well as an updated Q&A, so please please send in some questions in the comment section below, be it personal, art related, or anything in between. I really want to start making more content, potentially with my face in it, so yeah, um, look forward to that. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in my next one.